Hi, welcome to HowToStats.com. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to replace missing values with re predicted values, which will allow you to analyze a total or a complete data set, which should be more powerful than analyzing an incomplete data set. Now, we can see in this uh, data set that there are a sparse number of missing values, in this case, in, the, in, in this example case, 20 has two missing values, and um, we can see there's a few other ones popping up here and there. There's another missing value here, and as we keep going down, we can see some other missing values. There's not a lot. This case here has a few more. Uh, so how can we analyze a data set that has a, a t missing, va uh, missing values replaced with predicted values? And that um, is a more powerful way than de to deal with um, missing values uh, in most cases. Now, before I show us how to do this, or how I show you that how before I show you how to do this, I'll note that I did a previous uh, video where I tested uh, an important assumption before you actually uh, input uh, input uh, new data points in uh, re missing data missing uh, cases. And that's Little's MCAR test. You need to demonstrate that your data are missing completely at random first before you can replace missing values. And I've done that in another video, so check that out. It's called Little's MCAR test. Uh, I've done that, and I've demonstrated that my data are missing completely at random. So now I can actually input uh, new um, data points for the missing data points. And I'm going to use the arguably the second best way to do so in SPSS, which is using the expectation maximization algorithm, probably bested only by the multiple imputation uh, approach, which I'm going to show in a different video. Uh, so th this is still a pretty good uh, approach, especially when you don't have a lot of uh, missing data points. It probably won't make a huge difference between the two techniques. Now, the other thing I'm going to point out, in addition to Little's MCAR test, which you need to test uh, separately, is that uh, you should, in this case here, I have an inventory that has 16 items. This is fictitious data. And I've labeled items A for the first subscale and items B for the second subscale. And I think there are two reasons why you'd want to uh, input values based on an analysis that's based on only items associated with each respective subscale. And that's because uh, it's more powerful to do so uh, to uh, increase the correlations between the items. And so items that are from the same same subscale should have higher correlations than items from different subscales. And the second reason is because the um, expectation maximization algorithm is fairly resources intensive. So if you have a large sample size and a large number of variables, SPSS, in my experience, will tend to crash a bit. Um, and um, Or it'll just take a really long time to do the analysis. So two things. Try to keep those items homogeneous uh, because it'll probably increase the accuracy of the predicted values, but it also will run more efficiently. So what I need to do to do this is go into Analyze, and go into Missing Value Analysis, and then put the variables that are, as I mentioned, associated with the subscale that uh, you have missing values for. In this case, both item, sets of items do. So I'm just going to put all my subscale A items into my quantitative variable box, because all my variables are quantitative rather than categorical. 12, and that's it.